Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, which is a greeting of peace, peace be unto you. And people from all around the globe tune in to thedeanshow.com where we're here trying to help you understand Islam and Muslims. And when I come back, we're going to be talking to my good friend, Imam Sheikh Saeed, and we're going to be talking about the youth, trying to understand the youth, why some of them have drifted off and gotten involved in gangs and drugs and shootings and colors and crips and this and that. When we come back here on The Dean Show, we'll be right back. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. We have to break the ice a little bit so they can see this beautiful smile of yours. Inshallah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. We had you here with us before. Right. And people can go to thedeanshow.com and they can see your biography. They can read a little bit about you. And we're glad that you are here with us again on The Dean Show. You are doing a wonderful job. Thank you. I Thank love you. the show, Dean Show, Alhamdulillah. And every time I want to YouTube something, I say, okay, let me see what's on Dean <laughs> Show. Uh, Yusuf Esther, sometimes this other sheikh, that other sheikh. It's beautiful work, beautiful work. Inshallah, we encourage you to continue getting better and better and improving your work, Inshallah. Thank you. May Allah accept this from, from all of us. and Ameen. That we be in the higher levels of paradise. Ameen. 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 Yes. So, uh, you still playing ball? I'm still trying. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. Nice. One of the guys, he said, I, um, I was told, and then he said, no, no, no. I, I think you believe you're a good basketball player. Uh -huh. And I said, let us rewind that. Take the belief part and let us go to the court and let, us <laughs> let the ball speak for us. <laughs> I heard Shaquille O'Neal, he accepted Islam. Is this true or just a rumor? Did I can tell you what I know. Yeah. Um, I think it was way back when Hakeem Alajan was playing with yeah. the Raptors and also Mamadou Anjai was also playing with, for the Raptors here. And when the game between Raptors and uh, Lakers at that time, when the game finished, of course, a friend of uh, Mamadou was also with them. And his wife was wearing hijab. Yeah. And of course, this is what it is. And uh, subhanAllah, in that environment, Shaquille O'Neal came, you know, mm -hmm. Vince Carter at that time was like, you know, he put his guy and he said, when Shaquille comes, let me know. Yeah. So everybody, all the Raptors players, we were excited to see Shaquille, even though they just finished the game with him, yeah. but they want a personal, you know, handshake, a personal greeting. Yeah. So when Shaquille was about to come, the boy or the man reported to uh, uh, Vince Carter that he's here. So meanwhile, Shaquille noticed a sister and her husband who was wearing hijab. She's there. So he stopped going to them and he went to them. Yeah. And he gave, gave them the greeting of Islam. The, the greeting then, of peace. Huh? Peace. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. And then some of the guys like, are you a Muslim? And he turned, you know, how big is it? Of course I am. I'm a Muslim. Wow. And so that's what the guy reported. But he said he was there. And alhamdulillah. So a Muslim is simply for our non-Muslim guests, someone who's chosen freely, consciously to surrender and submit to the creator of the heavens and earth. Absolutely. Absolutely. No one else but that unique one God. The same God of Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah. All the prophets of God. And the last and final messenger. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That people can actually get to know from the last show that we did that about we his did. life. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, you're hip. I mean, you know what's going on on basketball. You know what's going on, you know, out there with the youth. And unfortunately, there are a lot of youth that are getting caught up into some of the vices out there. Mm. Gangs, yeah. drums, yeah. all these other things that are going on. And we want to help encourage them to come back to the correct way. Why do you think this is actually happening to some of the youth? Let's start off with that. Well, you have to understand when you're young, especially start, you know, when you're a baby and you're a young boy under you know, 14, 15, you're still under the influence of your parents. Yeah. 
So you listen to them, you, you know, they ask you to pray, you pray. But most of the time it's like, man, what do I have to pray? You know, God doesn't need my prayers a lot of times. Yeah. Some of them say, I know, you know, I have to pray, but it's too much. Or I'm, I don't want to pray, I'm too lazy. And as they grow, they gain their independence. Yeah. So they think they now I'm a man, you know. I'm, a, I'm an independent person, I'm an adult, I will do what I want to, what I feel like doing. Mm -hmm. And then those guys who were raised in the Islamic environment, they may go a little bit off track, then come back. Now, those pe people are not the problem. The problem is those, the actual ones that whom their parents were too busy to educate them about Islam. Mm -hmm. Or the parents would think by bringing the child to Sunday school for two hours, and then picking up their daughters without hijab. And we asked the daughter to wear, or the young girl to wear hijab at school. And the mother, you know, she, she comes to the message, she puts hijab on, she gets into her car, she takes over hijab. And this young lady, she sees this and says, well, hijab is not that important. My mother is not wearing, why do I have to wear it? Mm -hmm. And both parents are working most of the time. And what happened, this kid, is start, you know, developing his own personality, which later on will come something that is, uh, issue for the family. Mm -hmm. These guys are difficult to bring them back. Yeah, they are difficult because they don't know anything about Islam. Yeah, I remember in in Ottawa, this father he walks into uh, the Imam's house after midnight, and he said, "Sheikh, you have to talk to my daughter. She wants to move in with her boyfriend." Mm -hmm. And the question that the Imam asked was an old Egyptian man. He said, how old is your daughter? She said, 25. And he said, you, you know, left your responsibility for 25 years. And now when you realize the problem, you coming, running to me? I cannot help you at this age. Wow. So what is, what is the problem with the youth? Yeah. Is all this temptation around them, but at the same time not having that role model to follow or the environment that was needed for the communities to create for them. We're not doing our job. And I don't blame these kids for a bit. But I would advise them, listen, we have new Muslims already being there. They saw everything. They felt everything. They felt the pain of, of ignorance, of jail, of kufr. They can tell you about it. You don't have to go and experience yourself. Just listen to their stories, read about them, sit with them, Ask what happened, why did they become a Muslim, and why are you going away from Islam, you know, and you go in the direction where they just came back from. So my nasiha with these guys would be, listen, chill, relax, and cool down, come back to Islam, and you will see Islam. A lot of young also misconception about Islam. Islam, the thing is, oh, I'm going to the masjid, and I'm going to just read, and I'm just not going to do anything. And that is the wrong impression. Islam mm -hmm. is about f having fun. Yeah. We play ball, we play soccer, in, alhamdulillah, we have soccer league, we have a basketball league, we have, you know, hockey, hockey, everything is there. Anything that is halal for entertainment is there. Yeah, you know? so you made a very important point now the parents. So it looks like we first need to rewind a little bit and give some advice to the parents. Prevention, Islam is all about prevention. Absolutely. Let's, let's talk about the preventive measures that parents can take so they don't end up with something dangerous like this on their hands where the youth is totally gone and maybe in drugs it's too late. and yeah. where it's too late. Let's right. talk about this now. See, subhanAllah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةً حَسَنًا Indeed, you have in Rasulullah an excellent example. It's true. Everything that in, in your life, you know, dealing with media, you know, dealing with the politicians, dealing with, you know, you know uh, drug dealers or, you know, alcohol, everything is there you can find. So, I remember one of the incidents from the Sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a mother who wants to call her child, she said, sweetie, take this, take this. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he looked at her hand and he said, I hope you have something for that baby. <laughs> because if you don't, then you're lying to that child. And it would be sin on your book. Mm -hmm. You know, what does that show? It shows that as a parent, you got to be a role model. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to lecture these children but just live Islam, pray, and they will see the Salah is important. Go to the masjid as often or as hard as you try going to your job, and the child will see the masjid is important. Be honest, and they will be honest. I have my daughter. She is, you know, 
a year and a half. As soon as her mother starts praying, she runs and she grabs her little hijab and she prays right next to her taymiyyah. Mm -hmm. How? Because the, she saw her mother doing this. So as a parent, we have to be a role model. We have to understand, number one, the children are observing us in realizing that you know, everything that we do, they're learning from us. Remember the story of Imam Shafi. Mm -hmm. When a man came with excitement and he has a little son sitting next to him and said, Sheikh, I want my son to be exactly like you. Yeah. And the father and the father's so excited, Imam Shafi said, How old is he? He said, It's just a baby, he's only two years old. I brought him early. He said, It's too late. <laughs> it's too late. Yeah. And that is true. Two years is too late. I met a brother in uh, Egyptian brother in um, in Houston and he's and I saw a little funny, you know, um, CD player or you know and I said what is this he said it's, it's, it looks like a belt and he said that's for my wife I said what is that for he said she's pregnant I said subhanallah so why does she have to wear this he said the doctors say take this play slow music and the child will come well, when he's born it will be calm and easy to manage so I took that method he said and I put Sudais and you know, Hudayfi and Quran. And now, Alhamdulillah. See, they start to corrupt the child from that age. Yeah. You know, if we only use those methods and say, okay, while the mother is pregnant, how is her deen? You know, what are you doing to make sure that the child that is going to be born is going to be born righteous? Mm -hmm. And from there, yani, subhanAllah, as a father, don't bring anything haram to the house. You know, make sure everything is halal. As a father, as a mother, make sure the child knows the dua of going to the bathroom. As a father, make sure the, father, the child knows the way to the masjid. As a father, make sure that your house is located close enough to the masjid that when the time of, the time of salah comes and you're still at work and he's six, seven years old, he can walk to the masjid himself. Mm -hmm. As a father, you make sure you are a perfect role model. When a man said to one of the ulama of the past, he said to his son, who, do you gonna, who, who is your role model? And who are you going to be like? He said, you, as a child. He said, you're nothing but a loser boy. He said, why? You pray Qiyam al you read Quran, you go to Juma. He said, no, I wanted to be like Ali bin Abi Talib. And look what happened to me. I'm just a regular man now. <laughs> you know. So if you want your child to be perfect Muslim, aim high. Mm -hmm. And then from there on, you always, always try to raise them, mold them. By the time they're 15 and you start you know, experience some difficulties, it would be less more difficulties than any other any other you know child so it obviously doesn't work if you are lighting up a marlboro if you're not establishing that second pillar of islam praying right and you might be more adamant about following some cultural practices absolutely then this is not something that's going to work now no you, you you're sending mixed messages yeah you know some of the parents all over the phone you say when the little baby picks up the phone, he says, you know, can I speak to your father? And the father says, no, 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 tell him I'm not here. Oh, my father is not here. It's That's not. what he said. So we got lying now. So we <laughs> taught him from the first day how to lie. Now tomorrow when he lies to us, so we should not blame anyone but ourselves. Mm -hmm. So again, we have to be role models. But Abdullah ibn Abbas in Sahih al-Bukhari, you know, he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Everything you know, in the masjid he prays. He is never late for adhan, you know, unless it's some, something serious. You know, he gives the khutbah, he teaches. He's a perfect role model, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, and he's only seven years old. And then he said, I want to see Rasulullah, how he is at home. So he went to his aunt Maimona and said, can I spend the night with you? She said, sure. So he's pretending that he's asleep, but he's not asleep. So he said, Rasulullah, walk through the door. He gave his family a beautiful greeting. How are you? He asked about them. How was the, your day? And, and then he saw me and said, is the boy asleep? And Maimuna said, yes, he is. And then he started talking to his wife. You know, even this is a lesson for husbands. You know, just don't come and you know, go to the bathroom and take a bath and then you know, sleep. Spend some time with your wife and ask her how, she, how was her day. And then Abdullah said, mm -hmm. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he finished talking to his wife, he stood up for salah. And I said, now this is my time. So he said, I joined him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the salah. See, he wants to see what Rasulullah is doing. As a child, he, the child wants to see what his father is going to do. Now the parents are off at work 
and they might have a babysitter or the public school is raising them, meaning that they're spending most of the time, five, six, seven, eight hours in the public school. They come home, they got a babysitter, and the TV's actually educating the kids and the music and the hip hop and the gangster rap. Is this something that you're seeing also a lot? And what is your comments and advice on this? Let, us, let me address the issue of TV. In my views, when shaitan walks into your house or into my house and he sees TV, shaitan will say, man, this thing is doing more damage than I can do. Let me just, you know, sit back. I, I got that. this. Family. I guess this, you know, I hire TV. That's it. This yeah. little black box is destroyed, will destroy the whole family. Yeah. And you won't need shaitan because you already purchased your own shaitan. <laughs> and not only that, some of the family, you know, what little kids and the parents are like, yeah, Sheikh Saeed, you know, these kids are not listening. Can you talk to them? So I said, how many of you have TVs at home? And everybody raised their hands. <laughs> and I said, how many of you have two TVs at home? And they say, I say, how many of you have TV in their room? And almost half of the little, I'm talking about six, seven years old, they raised their hand. Yeah. So having that thing in your room, not monitoring, not knowing what the child is watching, is a dangerous thing to do. Very serious issue. I'm not saying you, sh you should not have TV, period. I say, if you have TV, get a DVD, DVD player, put some you know, kids show, Islamic kids show, but some lectures based on the, child, on the age of the children. You know, there are a lot of things for yeah. Muslim children. Put Dean show on, you know, <laughs> get some of the episodes and put them together and play them. So that people can understand because obviously on the normal TV, 95% of, of the things, promiscuity, you have men, kissing women, nakedness, you have all sorts of violence, it, things that obviously are going to have a detrimental effect on, on the that child. child. He's recording everything, isn't he? He's recording every single thing. SubhanAllah, my son, three years old, you just saw him. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm doing something, he won't even blink. He's just looking at me like this. Yeah. And I know he's that little eyes and nothing but two cameras, you know, just recording and reporting everything. And what I, if I do anything wrong, he would do exactly. And I can tell you, every time I'm, he says something wrong, it's something that he's seen in, in, at home or must you the street. It's not, eyes, it's not on his own things. But, you know, TV and what the children watch, it's very serious. One of the kids, he said, you know, to, to her dad, he said, why don't you love mom? He said, I love your mom. But you don't kiss her like, like they kiss each other. Ooh. <laughs> you know. So to them, love is, yeah. you got to do, you know, a kiss in front of the children to show affection and love. Because it's kissing all over the that's, TV, that's even in the cartoons. Everything. Everything, yeah. So I would say, uh, Muslim parents, to fear Allah. Because this child is a man, is a trust. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a gift to maintain it and to bring it back as a righteous individual. And that gift, unless you maintain it, and protect it and give it back as Allah gave you pure, you will be held accountable. And that's on the day of Yom Al Qiyamah. We will come like this. Our hands would be chained on our necks. And our children will say, Ya Allah, He did not teach me Quran. Ya Allah, He did that. Yeah, and unless they free you, you're not going anywhere. So this would be something, if you take away one thing, we can replace it with good permissible things. Good and programs that are of a positive in, uh, message, message yeah. to the youth Absolutely. and to the adults. And to the adults themselves. What are other, some of the other practical advices? Okay, we, we talked about the TV, replace it, not with the Britney Spears and the hip hop mm -hmm. and all the gangster stuff. Take that out, but we can put in Islamic programs. And also now, I mean, if the parents are out there busy, they're working, and now the children are out in school, they come home, and they don't have the mother or father babysitters there, and you know, how do they deal with this when they're busy? Work, work, money, money. But what? Good is this money if you're not gonna enjoy it, mm -hmm. or you won't you won't enjoy the presence of your family. I would say, take certain time out of you, take certain days off, just for the family. Yeah, take them outdoors, you make them busy, let them run, get, take them to the park, spend some quality time. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with his all his busy schedule, he used to spend some quality times with his wife and his children. So, not only TV that. You know, if you keep them busy with good things, sports, you know, um, out, outdoor activities, you know, visiting good, righteous families, you know, taking them to the masjid for a lecture, for an Islamic event, can, their schedule can be really packed. You can make them busy 
if you only really mindful of what you can do for them for them now those youth who are listening and you know what they're doing this eternal struggle they feel what we're saying is right that goodness wants to come out but they're around other friends who are calling them to the weekend night at the party to places that they shouldn't be what advice do we have for them imagine yourself is standing in the middle of a pool that is full of urine mm -hmm. It's filthy. Yeah. And you want to perform salah. Mm -hmm. And you lift your foot and say, I'm going to wash my foot. You know, and then you put it back again in that urine. Would you ever be pure? No. Nope. So what do you need to do is take yourself out of that filthy environment. Find righteous, good environment. Good friends. You know, and you can, where can you find good friends? Not in nightclubs or, you know, you can only find them as Allah said in the Quran, in the masajid. In Islamic, you know, Muslim uh, organized events. This is where you can find them. So take yourself from that. Stay pure. Now you can move outside and stay that, that in that situation by being with brothers who will remind you. If you, do, if you look at a lady who is passing away, say, Akhi, fear Allah. You know, Allah is watching you. You know, if, you, you know, if you're my, and, you know, not mindful of your salah, say, let's go pray. If they see you doing a wrong thing, they will correct you. If you're not doing well with your wudu, they will correct your wudu. So this is what we need. They need to change the environment. And I will also say to all the new Muslims who accept Islam, don't try to go back and bring your non-Muslim friends before you learn enough of your deed. If you don't know how to walk, just imagine this. You don't know how to swim and you want to dive and save someone who's drowning. Both of you are going to drown. Yeah. So stay dry until you learn what to do and then go and help them out. to be A couple more points. We're almost out of time. There's brothers and sisters who are, mashallah, all praises to the Creator that He's guided them and they're coming along. But it's a great challenge nowadays because there's a lot of trials and tests with the opposite genders. And now... The person, he obviously has this desire to want to be with the woman. Women want to be with the man. But we know what Islam says about the boyfriend-girlfriend thing, which nowadays is kind of odd that if a person, a boy doesn't have a girlfriend, the girl doesn't have a boyfriend. Something's wrong with them. Something's wrong with them. Yeah. But they want to preserve their chastity. Right. They want to preserve this morality. Right. What advice for them to stay steadfast and some things that can help them out? Number one, the one that can help is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with sincerity, look and say, Ya Allah, this is who I am. And you know what I used to be. Ya Allah, keep me on this path and guide me. That's number one. Number two, you know, do what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Number one, try to fast as much as you can if you're single. Number two, what do you do is avoid places of fitna. You know, you can't say, you know, I'm, you know, I'm struggling with myself, but at the same time, you being with all these un almost undressed women, and at the same time, you know, watching all these videos or movies, and they, what, what, yeah. but nothing but drive you crazy. Yeah. And then you say, oh, man, I'm struggling. Well, you put yourself <laughs> in that position, situation. Get, get out of the so environment. So get out of that environment. And number three, always stay in the masjid. The masjid environment is beautiful. Why? Because there's always malaika. Yeah. And because of the malaika, you will feel their presence mm -hmm. in, your, in, in your behavior and in your heart, inshallah. I want to thank you again. May God thank Almighty, you. the Creator, Allah, reward you for being with us. May Allah reward you. Inshallah, we hope to see you third annual of Journey of Faith, inshallah, next year, Eid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you. Thank Allah you very much. Inshallah. And I'd like to thank you again for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. We look forward to having you again next time. I hope you got to benefit this beautiful way of life, the way of life of all the messengers. And the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that if we follow it sincerely, seeking the pleasure of our Lord, there's nothing left in, less than paradise, and there's nothing wor worth it. These cars, these women, and all these things that are temporary, take a time out from the rat race of life and really connect with your Creator and ask Him for the guidance. And it would only be fair if He guided you. And come back here every week to learn some more good stuff here on The Dean Show. We'll see you next time. God willing, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you.
everyone's talking about. Prove. If you find one contradiction, it can't be from God. But the rational idea, the rational explanation is, you do your best. Give up worshiping God is one. I will never give up spreading this message. We hope that you take that necessary step. You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow. So you got to find that urgency to do the right thing right now. The, the reality of life usually doesn't sink in until tragedy comes. You get a few bad people, the media grabs a hold of that and spins it the way they want to. If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is a tenet our faith to... It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me. Oh Allah, you see, oh Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your sinful slave, you're my loving Lord, I'm the one who runs away, oh Allah guide me.